In this video, I'll share five pro tips for intermediate finger picking blues guitars. If you're an intermediate player looking to take your finger picking blues to the next level, then you're in the right place. And if you're not quite at that intermediate level yet, then hang out here anyway, because I absolutely wish that I heard these tips a lot sooner than I actually did in my guitar journey. Plus, I'll share a resource with you that will help you build a solid finger picking skill set. Before we dig into the tips, though, let's have a listen to a cool little ditty that will serve as our example for a lot of these tips. For most of this example, I'm relying heavily on my finger picking framework. Well, what's a framework? In short, it's just dedicating specific fingers to specific strings. Now I use a thumb and three finger framework where my thumb plays the lower pitch three strings, six, five, and four. My index plays the third string, my middle plucks the second string, and my ring finger plucks the first string. There's nothing novel about this. Many people use this framework, although there are plenty of great pickers who use something else entirely. More on that in a minute. I like this framework for me because I feel like it gives me the most options. I've got most of my digits ready to pluck some strings and it makes parts with four strings played at the same time possible. <laughs> Merle Travis, Chet Atkins, Mississippi John Hurt, Etta Baker, these are all great finger pickers and they each have their own unique picking framework or picking style, their own set of habits that work for them and serve the style of music that they're playing. Now there isn't a right way, a right framework or a wrong framework, but as an intermediate player, you should have your framework well in place because having a go-to framework just eliminates a lot of the guesswork of choosing which finger should play which note. You don't wanna get bogged down in this when you're learning new material. And even as a beginning finger picker, we want to automate as much of the mundane decisions as possible, internalize it really. But as an intermediate player, we really want to lean into it and it should become second nature. But don't get too comfortable. There are definitely times when you should break your framework to serve the music. And that's tip number two. All right, hang on. I just said that we got to lean into our framework and that's true, but that doesn't mean that you'll never break your framework. You definitely will. There are times when it's absolutely necessary. Even think about rapid single string alternating picking like we discussed in Tuesday blues number 410 when we had a ragtime lick and in the performance piece at the beginning of this video, I broke free of my framework to play some notes on the lower strings and I used my index and ring finger, something I don't normally do. Parts like this can be tricky at best and sometimes impossible to play without stepping outside of your chosen framework. We can always go back to home base, that comfort zone, but the more comfortable that you become switching in and out of your go-to picking framework, the more prepared you'll be to handle any musical situation that comes your way. And before we get to tip number three, I want to share a resource that I've created for those just getting started with finger style blues, or if you need some exercises to polish up your technique. If that's you, then you should check out my new finger picking quick start. Since 2011, I've taught thousands how to finger pick and the finger picking quick start is a straightforward proving plan that will help you start playing finger style blues, even if you've been unable to before. So you can grab that at the link in the description. Most of us start learning guitar in the same way. We learn G, C, and D chords on the fretboard, and then we begin developing the important skill of changing between them. It takes a whole lot of effort to train your fingers to quickly snap into position, and ideally, your fingers are falling in place at the same time. If you strum along with these chords for years on end, then you've really deepened your muscle memory for changing chords in this way. And that's great in most cases. Snappy and solid chord changes are a very good thing. But as a finger picker playing chords, bass and melody at the same time, you'll need to develop the flexibility and agility for chord changes. There are many times where chords may change, but you need a melody note to hang over the bar or vice versa. Here's an example. Notice how we're changing from two voicings of an A7 here 
and ultimately we're trying to target this one as we move over to the second measure of this example but we hold this and maybe do something a little bit unconventional here on the fretboard to make sure that we can keep the top two strings and really the second string ringing it's dying out for sure, but it's still kind of connected to the next part, right? There's some carry over here. And you can hear particularly that second string ringing as I do that little walk up on the fourth string. Let's hear it again. It's subtle, but it's the subtle things. that really help to support the part. To develop this, you can work on example three or parts like it, or you could drill this with an exercise like this. We've got an important melody note occurring on the and of four of each measure, and it's not a note that's in the chord that we're changing into. So we've got to change with a little more precision, right? We're not changing from C to G, and I tend to play my G this way, right? There's a G7 or a G, but we're not just changing everything all at once to nail the chord changes. What we're doing requires a little more subtlety, a little more finesse than that. There's the chord change, but notice that I'm still holding the C down because that note from the C is ringing. Now in this case, it's the open first string, so we didn't have to, but watch what happens as we progress through this exercise. We've got that ringing. Now I've changed and I'm kind of hinting at the C that's coming. I changed to a note from the C chord before I get there. Now here, I'm playing a note that's from the chord, but I'm starting before the chord change. So I'm almost changing half of the fingering before I need to. We've got to make sure that everything else still rings out. So we're kind of stepping into these chord changes, which might seem like bad habits or bad form, but it's really necessary to keep these parts singing. As finger pickers, we have our hands full just picking the right strings in the right sequence. But one thing that is often neglected is the rhythm of the piece. Tip number four is to practice picking a variety of rhythms. Two sixteenth notes followed by an eighth note is different from a triplet, and an eighth note with a swing feel is different from straight eights. And your picking hand should be able to play each of these. Here's a quick etude that mixes things up rhythmically and across different picking fingers. One and two triplet, three triplet, four. One and two E and three and a four. One and two E and three triplet four. One and two triplet three and four. As an intermediate player, you'll want to grow your ability to play what the song calls for, and rhythm is a big part of that. So practice throwing rhythmic change ups to your picking hands so you'll be ready for anything. I like to mix up my playing as much as anybody. I like playing slide, boom chick, electric blues, and rock, and even good campfire strummers. But over the years, I've noticed something. For example, say I'm working on an electric guitar jam for my members or polishing some bag porch strummers, and I don't really finger pick at all for a week. When I come back, I can tell. My finger picking skills are the first to go. So you've got to play finger style regularly to keep your fingers fresh. Not picking for a month and then playing freight train for four hours on Sunday afternoon is probably not going to help you. It's going to do more harm than good. So I want you to spend a few minutes regularly just picking through a favorite song or even just a collection of go-to exercises. You'll do more for your playing that way and you'll keep from losing your hard-won finger picking skills. And if you're looking for a few exercises to help keep your fingers in tip-top shape, check out my finger picking quick start. Beginners will love the focus on the fundamental movements and if you're an intermediate player, you can use this as a group of exercises to help keep your fingers ready for action. Grab the finger picking quick start right over here and I'll see you in the next lesson. Until then, practice smart and play on.